Hello everybody, this is the third video on probability and statistics in the series of videos Exploratory Computing with Python. My name is Mark Bucker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today's topic is hypothesis testing. More specifically, we're going to do a t-test and we'll learn today what a t-test is. Let's go back a little bit to what we've learned so far. We can calculate, if you have a set of data, we can calculate the sample mean by just summing up all the values and dividing it by n, the number of values. Um, we have learned now that the sample mean is only an estimate of the true underlying mean. If you draw 100 points from a normal distribution with a mean of 100, then the sample mean might be 98 or 104. Similarly, we can calculate the sample standard deviation with this formula right here, where we divide through by n minus 1. The sample standard deviation is a measure of the spread of the data, um, and it's only an estimate of the true underlying standard deviation. Uh, while the sample standard deviation gives, a spread of the, uh, gives a, an idea of the spread of the data, there's also something called the standard deviation of the sample mean. That gives us an idea of, how, of the spread of the sample mean itself and it's calculate, calculated as the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n, where n is the number of data points. For example, consider we have the data shown here, we first import our packages, we have x here, and I think it's 10 values, let's print it out, print the length of x, and let's also calculate the mean of x, np.mean of x, and print np.standarddeviation of x, uh, with a DD off of 1. Remember, you have to specify the DD off equals 1 when you use the standard deviation in NumPy so that you divide through by n minus 1. If you calculate the standard deviation of a pandas data frame, then the default is to divide by n minus 1 and you don't have to specify this separately. We calculate these. So it turns out that our x has 10 values. Um, the mean of those 10 values is 19.6, and the standard deviation is 6.5. Uh, we can now also calculate the standard deviation of the sample mean with this formula here. Print np.st of x dd of is equal to 1, and we divide through by the square root of the length of x. And maybe just to make it look nice, we say here this is the mean. This is the standard deviation, and this is the standard deviation of the sample mean. And you see the standard deviation of the sample mean is 2.05. Imagine now the following. Somebody comes in and says, all right, we have these 10 values of x. Um, I think they come from a normal distribution with a mean of 25. And then you say, well, but if I calculate the sample mean, it's only 19.6. And the question now is, do you have enough evidence to say, well, the mean is not 25? Or with this data, can you really not say that the mean is, could not be 25? Even though the sample mean is 19.6, if you would have had a larger data set of, say, 100 or 1,000 points, might the mean actually be 25? That's called a hypothesis test. Um, and the hypothesis is that the, the, z the null hypothesis, which is commonly written as H0, is that the mean, the mean in this case we said is 25. That's the, z the null hypothesis. And the uh, alternative hypothesis is that the mu, mu is not equal to 25. Let's make that in two lines. So here it is. Our zero hypothesis is that mu is 25. Our alternative hypothesis is that mu is not equal to 25. It's called a two-sided t-test, and you need to give it a significance level. Like, how sure do you want to be the, about your uh, <coughs> the outcome? The significance level is, say, 5%. So like I said, this is a two-sided t-test t-test 
with significance level 5%. All right, in statistics books, most statistics books, introductory statistics books, give a cookbook recipe of how to do a t-test. You have to calculate a t-statistics and look something up in a table and then your answer almost magically appears. Here we're going to try to visualize what we are doing. What we're going to do is we're going to draw the t distribution in a graph and we're going to give the confidence levels, the 95% confidence level around the mean of our null hypothesis, which is 25. And we're going to see if the sample mean falls within that 95% confidence level or yeah, confidence interval. First, we're going to import the t distribution from scipy.stats import t. Next, we're going to draw the probability density function of the t distribution with the mean of 25. So let's call it mu is equal to 25 and a standard deviation sig hat equal to the formula we've calculated before, which is right here. It is the standard deviation of the sample mean. Um, well, we have to define our x values. Let's call them xp because the data is already called x. XP is equal to np.lin space going from 15 through 35 with 100 points. Um, then our y can be calculated as t.pdf, the probability density function of t. Um, first, we have to give it the x values we want to calculate it. And the t distribution takes one additional parameter, which is the number of degrees of freedom, which is the number of samples minus 1. How many samples do we take? We have 10 values in our x data. So we want to calculate this at xp. Sorry about that. xp. And we have 10 values, so the number of degrees of freedom is 9. The location is equal to mu. And the, standard, uh, the scale is equal to the standard deviation of the sample mean, which is called sig hat. Um, and then we can plot it. plt.plot x versus y xp services versus y do we calculate it xp here yes good should have probably picked better names so there we go this is the t distribution around the mean of 25 and with a standard deviation equal to the standard deviation of the sample mean we want to now add the 95 percent confidence interval around the mean of 25 so we calculate the 25 2.5 percentile and a 97.5 percentile. Let's call them x025 is equal to t.ppf of uh, 0.025 with 9 degrees of freedom, a, lo a location of mu, and a scale equal to sig hat. And we're going to copy that line and also calculate the 97.5 percentile. Let's call it x975. Then we calculate it here at the 975 percentile um, with the same number of degrees of freedom, mu, and sig hat. And we add vertical lines for the confidence intervals, plt.ax line of x025 with colors equal to red. And plt.ex line of x975, all with the color of red. And see where they are. There they are. You see, that's the confidence, the 95% confidence interval around the mean of 25. Now, where does our sample mean fall? Let me go back here. The sample mean was 19.6, which is right here. So it's outside that band. Let's plot it in here. PLT.ex, phi line, np.mean of the data, which we call x. Let's make it black and also give it a bit little thicker line, line width is equal to 2. There it is. So our sample mean falls outside this band. What does that mean? Well, we were testing whether our null hypothesis, whether the mean is equal to 25, while the alternative hypothesis is that it's not equal to 25. And right now we find out that our Sample mean is outside the 95% confidence interval around that mean of 25. So there is enough evidence to reject our null hypothesis, which means that we have to accept the one hypothesis. Uh, so we conclude now 
that the null hypothesis can be rejected, A0 can be rejected, and that the mean is not equal to 25. Let's make this a bit bigger, huh? There we go. That's all I had for you today. I hope to see you next time.